Sometimes the biggest challenge in Photoshop is just knowing what effects to apply next to your images. In this video, I'm gonna cover four commonly used Photoshop effects specifically for landscape photography. Hey, I'm Austin James Jackson, landscape photographer based in Southern Utah. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly and easily create these effects to make more compelling landscape images. In this video, I'm using Photoshop 2024, but you should be able to recreate these effects in just about any Photoshop version. Let's go ahead and jump right in there. So the first effect that can be done here in Photoshop is called the Orton effect. Now you've probably heard of the Orton effect before, but there's a lot of different ways to apply it. A lot of different ways people are doing it. Let me show you the way that I think works best for landscape photography. So first things first, you want to merge all visible to create a new layer, which is gonna contain everything you see on the screen in one layer. You're gonna go Command, uh, Alt, Option, Shift, and E to merge all visible. Now you have layer one. You can retitle this Orton if you want. I always like to do that to just keep my things a little bit more organized. Now you're going to go to filter. You're going to go down to blur and you're going to go to Gaussian blur. You're going to blur by roughly the amount of pixels um, that match the amount of megapixels for your camera. So I shoot with a Sony a7R 4 which is like 61 or something megapixels. So I always just blur by 60. If you're shooting with a 20 megapixel camera, use a radius of 20 pixels when you blur. You're going to go ahead and hit OK to let that load out. Now change the blend mode of your layer to soft light. Now you can see it looks way too strong. We're gonna turn that layer off really quick. We're gonna use a luminosity mask to make a selection so that the uh, Orton effect is only being applied to the brighter areas of the image, which is what we want. We don't want the glow. The Orton effect is essentially a glow. We don't want it to be applied to the darker areas like the trees in this image. Now, if you have a luminosity mask panel, uh, you have the TK luminosity mask panel here that I really, really like. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it without using luminosity mask panel, but if you do own one already, um, I highly recommend just doing it that way. If you don't, this is gonna be the way to do it. You're gonna go to select, gonna go to color range. You're gonna change this to highlights, and then you're gonna change the fuzziness to 100. Then you can adjust the range as you see fit. Again, I just wanna make a good selection of the bright spots on the image and not the dark spots on the image. Uh, the lighter color that you see here, the more the Orton effect is gonna be applied, which is good. I want it to be applied along this right here, uh, especially because that is where the sunlight is coming in from. When you're happy with that, go ahead and hit OK. Let that load out, and then you're gonna go ahead and hit the layer mask button. Uh, when you're selected on the Orton layer. Now you can go ahead and hit the eyeball and you can see exactly what that Orton effect has done. So you can see before and after. I really like the way this has softened up some of the glowy spots in my image. Now additionally, uh, oftentimes I will go in and edit the Orton effect so I will add some additional effects. So one thing that I sometimes like to do, throw a little color balance on there. Uh, when I select color balance, you can see if I adjust this now, it'll affect the whole image. But if I select this square with the down arrow, you can see it underlines Orton. That means that this layer is just affecting the Orton layer. So now I can adjust this and it will only affect this Orton layer. So if I wanted to warm up the Orton effect, you could do that there. You could do the same thing with a curves layer. You could just brighten this up to make the Orton a little stronger. For this image, it's not really necessary, but I wanted to show you because I know some of you guys will want to make some adjustments um, on an image like this when you're using the Orton effect. Now, additionally, I want to show you guys a little trick that I do with the curves adjustment. If you've watched a lot of my YouTube videos, you may already know this trick, but if not, let me show you guys. I like to open up a curves. Now, I want to add contrast to this scene, but I don't want my lights to get too light and my darks to get too dark, but I still want to add a little bit of contrast. I'm gonna go on the bottom quarter of my curve here. I'm just gonna drag this down to darken the image, add a little bit of contrast. Then I'm going to go on the top quarter here and drag it up. One thing you notice when I toggle this is it's way too strong. The darks are too dark, the brights are too bright. Now I go down to on the very bottom left and I grab this anchor point here and I drag this up. You can see if I drag it up too far, it starts to give my photo this like matte look. So as I'm doing this, I usually like to, I just watch the output here uh, or I watch the image. I usually do a little bit of both. Usually an output of like five to 10 is plenty, just like that. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Drag this down just so that my highlights aren't too terribly blown out. Now I can toggle this before and after. You can see how much saturation that's introduced into the scene just by adding a little bit of contrast. And I haven't really, I haven't lost any detail in my darks here. 
even though they have darkened, but there's still plenty of detail. So this is how I like to add uh, curves uh, or contrast into my scene. I don't really have anything that I call this other than just like a special way that I like to add contrast with curves in Photoshop, but I'm doing this on like literally every single one of my photos. Two more effects I'm gonna show you on this photo here. The first one is just adding a little bit of pop, which looks great on all images, but especially on images like this where we have these like sharp details that we have in the water here. You're gonna make sure that you're on a brand new layer here. You can duplicate the background layer if you want. Then I'm gonna to go to select, I'm sorry, I'm gonna to go to filter. I'm gonna go down to other. Then I'm gonna to go to filter. I'm gonna to go to sharpen. I'm gonna to go to unsharp mask. These are the settings that you wanna use, an amount of 30%, a radius of 40, and a threshold of zero. Go ahead and hit okay. Now I know this is going to appear way too strong to begin with. Um, you can see this is before. This is after, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more here, before and after. So you can see it's a little bit too strong. I usually like to lower this between 30 and 50%. You can look at it from a full scale, but I usually recommend zooming in because you won't see it unless you zoom in before and after. So this is just a way of adding a little bit of micro contrast. It's a nice little effect. Um, it might not make too big of a difference on like Instagram, but if you are going to print your photo or show it anywhere big, this will definitely make a huge difference. So I do like adding this little um, bit of pop to your image. Now, the last effect that I want to show you guys is how to add a little bit of mid-tone contrast. This is essentially adding contrast based on just the mid-tones in your image rather than adding contrast to the whole image or the highlights or the shadows. Again, if you have a luminosity mask panel, just use that to create a mid-tones mask. This is the TK panel. I'm gonna show you how to do it if you don't have a luminosity mask panel. So you're gonna go to select, you're gonna go down to color range, and then you're gonna change select to mid-tones. I like to have a fuzziness of 100%. I like to use a range of between 70 and 30 usually. Depending on the image, I may adjust this back and forth, but I just wanna get a good selection of the midtones. You can see here, this black shows me that it is not selecting the waterfall in the middle or the really dark plants on the side, which is just perfect for me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. That's gonna load out as a selection. Now we're gonna grab a curves layer or levels if you prefer to add contrast in levels. Then you're just going to create a simple little S curve here. And you can adjust this as you see fit. You can adjust these points however you want. I do recommend sticking with just two points. Don't start creating a third one, otherwise things can get a little funky. Once you've done that, go ahead and uh, toggle this eyeball. You can see before and after. If I felt like I wanted to readjust, maybe I could go back in, make some slight adjustments but that is how you can really easily add some mid-tone contrast to your images. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I really hope it was helpful for you. If you learned something new today, please consider leaving a like and a subscribe. It helps me to continue to grow my channel, continue to release weekly videos, helping you to become a better landscape photographer. As always, I'm happy to answer questions down below in the comments, and I appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time.